Hey guys, for this tutorial, what we're going to be doing now is taking a look at the Tetrix Prism. All I've done is just built a just quick mod uh, robot from the Tetrix uh, Max Kit. Um, just made a few little tweaks to the kit itself just so I could get some wheels on here. Um, you don't have to build a robot for this actual tutorial, but what we're going to be taking a look at is how to program our DC motors. And so we've got servo motors and DC motors, but we're gonna be taking a look at these bad boys. These are gonna ones that allow for movement, controlling your robot, getting it to navig navigate and things like that. So I thought it'd be helpful to build a robot so you can actually see how something would move. But if you're just starting out in your class, all you really need is just a Tetrix and a motor itself. You don't need to have the whole robot. However, we all know that kids like movement, they like things that grab their eyes and, and are attention grabbing and so if you happen to have a Tetrix Max kit or some just pieces lying around, this can be very helpful to get them building just a simple robot um, so as they learn how to program motors and eventually sensors, they can have something that actually moves and it's tangible. So we're going to jump over and take a look at the code. It's a sample code that comes with the Prism library. Make sure you understand what all the lines mean in the sketch in terms of comments and loops and setup and things like that. And then we'll show you what this looks like moving one motor here and then eventually at the end of the lesson getting both motors to move to get this robot going straight, backwards, turning, things like that. So let's jump into the code and see what we've got. So one of the things that we got to do is we need to connect our DC motor to the prism and so I've already got that installed but I just want to show you real quick what I've done um, on this DC motor your kit comes with this block right here this wire just clips right into the motor there's no right or wrong way there's only one way to get it on it looks like this there's these two little metal prongs right here and there's two little slots with metal prongs you just clip those right in and then this wire Actually, then on your on your prism, you've got a port for motor one and motor two, and all you do is you're just plugging the black into the black and the red into the red. That's as simple as it is. And then we jump to the code, and away we go. So let's make sure that we're ready to go. Rock and roll. Make this bad boy move. Motors. But before we do that, um, we're going to show you how to load this program up, and then I want to talk a little bit about what it all means within these programs. So, what I've got up here is just my basic Arduino software. Uh, so if I, I've got Arduino installed right here. I've just opened up my Arduino. What I've done, I've got up here to File, and I went to Examples. We're going to scroll down to the Tetrix Prism Library. If you haven't installed that yet, check out the previous tutorials on how to do so. And what we're going to click is this Act 2 here, which is the Move DC Motor. And when you do that, this is the code that you get. Now, a couple things that people have asked and I should clarify. If you've never used Arduino before, the very first thing that's, that's worth noting are these kind of grayed out comments ideas right here. These are called comments. Anytime you have the backspace or the backslash or if you have the backslash with an asterisk next to it, these are called comments. The, the program doesn't read these and what a comment does, these are the notes either from the programmer if you're using someone else's code or for yourself or if you're a teacher this is where students could insert their ideas of what they're thinking. You can do that here, as well as you can see down here with the two backslashes, you can make your notes of what is actually supposed to be happening. And so this is really, really important when you're laying out your sketch, especially if you're working with students, make them express what it is that they're trying to do. This will help them learn to problem solve, it will help them learn to think through their code, and then if they get stuck, you can kind of look through their thoughts and see what it is that they're trying to do. Now. What we have here is just explaining what the program is, that the program is going to spin the DC motor on channel 1 for 5 seconds, it's going to stop, and then it's going to go the opposite direction. And then you can see the author and when it was created. The next thing that you're going to see here 
is this include. What this does, what the include option does, is this allows the robot one time to get some functionality to what we're doing. In the case of the prism, the include is this prism here, this prism.h. This pulls the prism library. And what this is actually going to allow it to do is it makes our programming on our end easier. It puts a little, a lot of functions and little smaller programs all together, kind of groups it. Um, so it's not as complicated for us to get code up and running. This is always included at the beginning of any code. If you've used NeoPixels or if you expand within your Arduino coding, there's all sorts of libraries that you can install. And this just helps the Arduino compile all the program can, you know, kind of contained within that software library. The next part of what we have is we have what are called functions. And functions are these right here. The first one that we have is the setup. And the setup or let me take a step back. What a function does, it's a set of lines of codes that kind of have a name. In this case, we have setup. And what it does, it'll run one time. So setup's gonna run one time, and it's gonna do all the tasks that need to happen when the Arduino's first turned on. When we go to plug it in, this is what needs to happen. Um, and what this is going to do is just get everything ready to go. In our case, it activates the prism. It turns the controller on, and what it's going to allow the, the Prism controller to do, basically, is when it's initialized, it's going to allow us to use that start button. Um, it puts in other parameters and things as well, but the biggest thing for us it allows us to use the red and the green button on the Prism controller. And then at the end, it just kind of terminates it off when we're all done. Now, the other thing that you'll see sometimes, another function is, in our case here, is a loop. And we can see that it's going to keep this repeating forever indefinitely. Uh, and this just allows the program of the code to continue to happen over and over again. There's going to be other functions that pop up. And as we get into the coding, we'll break that down. We can get into arguments and things like that. But for now, this is what we're going with. We've got the comments here, whether you have a big block with the asterisk or just two backslashes for a one-line comment. We've talked about the include, which just brings in the Prism library itself so it functions more smoothly. This basically activates the, the Prism controller itself, and then this is the actual code. So what we're going to be looking at right here is this Prism.setMotorPower. What we have in here, what's going to be happening is dealing with what's called the arguments. Um, and so as you look here, these are the arguments in the parentheses. We're gonna turn the motor power, this is the code to activate DC motors right here. This here, the first one activates which DC motor. We can have the options of one or two. That's what the prism allows at this point in time. So we can choose, in this case, motor, DC motor one. And after the comma, what we have there then is how much power that we want. And you can see that right there that we've got it for 25% power. This goes on a scale of one through 100, 100 being full power, zero being fully off. In this case, it's gonna move the wheel clockwise. It's gonna go forward in a clockwise motion. Then we've put in this delay. And remember, we operate in milliseconds, so this is actually gonna keep the motor on for five seconds. So then we've put in another set motor power, which is actually going to stop the motor. So motor one at a power of zero actually is going to coast the motor to come to a complete stop. It's gonna do that for two seconds here. And then we're gonna do the exact same thing, but we're gonna move the motor in a counterclockwise direction. So it's actually gonna go 25% power negative backwards or counterclockwise. And it's gonna keep doing that. And when we go to run the program, you're going to see the robot basically pivot and go in a circle, stop, go in a circle the other way. And so what we need to do is go ahead and plug in our prism like we've done with our USB cable. We're going to go up here and we're going to click upload and then we're going to run it. So let's take a look to see how this looks. All right, so I've got my USB cable here. I've already got it plugged into the back of my, my Mac. I got my prism here. You may have it attached to a robot or not. Either way, it's, it's not a problem. I'm gonna go through here, I'm gonna plug in my USB cable. I got that in there. 
Okay, the blue light, green light's on. I'm ready to go. I've got the power. I've got the power switch already turned on. And now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to click this upload. Now I have an error, and you can see that the error here is showing me that I've got um, compiling to the, the Uno. So I'm just going to go back up here and check. Um, I've got the Uno selected. Okay, the USB. We should be, be good. We're going to try this again. Sometimes your port gets off. I was actually using a different Arduino earlier, so there, sometimes it gets a little bit of, bit of confusion. You have to swap those out. So now I just double checked my port. Now I'm good to go. It's done uploading. And now the motor should spin. Perfect. There you have it. All right, so this is a aerial shot of the robot itself. I got the program loaded. Um, what's going to happen is the one motor is going to be on for five seconds and then stop and then go the other way for five seconds. So in this case, it's kind of like a pivot. It should just go um, kind of in a circle. Let's take a look. It is going backwards or counterclockwise. And it'll just keep going through that loop there for five seconds the way we have it programmed. So now let's take a look at it and see if we can get the other motor and then eventually getting both motors. All right, so now we've got one motor moving. You could easily go back and adjust this, adjust the power, make it go faster or slower. You could have the other motor. If you have another DC motor on hand, you can just swap that to a two. The other code that I wanted to show you is there is a way to program this at the same time. All we simply do here is we set this and we call it set motor powers with an S. And now as opposed to identifying what motor here, here I'm just going to delete these out because this isn't going to be helpful now. What we're going to be doing now right here is we're going to be changing this. And so now the first part is for motor 1. And so I could put 50, and this is going to be motor 2. This should have it go straight. Motor, same power, going straight. And I'm going to change this to just 3 seconds for the time being. And then it's going to coast. All right, then we're going to go ahead and make this powers, and let's make this negative 50 and negative 50. We're going to make this three seconds. I'm actually going to save this as a different file. I'm going to call this DC straight. And now when we plug this in and run it, our robot should go forward for three seconds, stop, and then go backwards for three seconds. So let's see if I was indeed correct. All right, so here's the robot. As soon as I hit start, it should hopefully go forward for three seconds, stop, and come back for three seconds. Alright, so you can see that obviously my robot did not go straight. Um, so let's go back and look at the code and realize what we did. If you look here, we only power down one motor. So after troubleshooting, trying to figure it out, um, we got to change this as well. So we want to make this motor 0 and 0. Add an S here. Motors 0 and 0. So now we load it up we should have more success. All right, so let's see what it does here. All 
All right, so it's clearly not going straight. Let's go back and look at the code. All right, so you can see, once again, we're still not going straight. And what's happening is the way my wires are plugged into my motors. I have one motor installed backwards, so to speak, uh, on my robot. So I could go through and reinsert the motor. But for the sake of coding, this is good problem-solving skills. These are things that are going to happen with students. We just need to make one of these a negative. And so we're going to go through and change that now. So what we're doing now is making motor one go counterclockwise and clockwise should go straight. And then we're gonna do the opposite in order to make it go backwards. So now we should have success. Here we go. All right, here we go. All right, so the final thing that I had to do was I just had to tamper with the settings of my motors. One seems to kick in faster than the other, so I had to adjust the settings a little bit in order to get it going as straight as I can. So go ahead and check out the video, and then I'll also show you there uh, one other variable that I have to keep in to consideration, which will probably always prevent me from going perfectly straight. All right, we finally got our about as straight as we're going to get. So let's go ahead and run this so you can see that it actually is possible. One of the things that you're going to notice why this will probably, for me, never be completely straight is this wheel right here wobbles. So if you can see it, but there's it, kind of a wobble to it, and so it's always going to be an issue until I get a new wheel. For this wheel here is super smooth. So those are just things that you're gonna have to work through, variables and pitfalls. You know, as we go through, I think it's good for kids to see. How do you problem solve? Nothing's ever perfect. I'm sure there's gonna be other methods, and so if you have a suggestion on how to correct that in a different way, I'd love for you to leave a feedback. I'll leave a comment in the video on YouTube or on my website, coffeefromthebrain.com. And on the next episode, we're gonna be taking a look at servo motors, so adding the next layer to our programming and building skills. Have a great one. All right, we finally got our about as straight as we're gonna get, so let's go ahead and run this so you can see that it actually is possible. One of the things that you're going to notice why this will probably, for me, never be completely straight is this wheel right here wobbles. So if you can see it, but there's it, kind of a wobble to it, and so it's always going to be an issue until I get a new wheel. For this wheel here is super smooth. So those are just things that you're going to have to work through, variables and pitfalls. You know, as we go through, I think it's good for kids to see how do you problem solve. Nothing's ever perfect. I'm sure there's going to be other methods. And so if you have a suggestion on how to correct that in a different way, I'd love for you to leave a feedback. I'll leave a comment in the video on YouTube or on my website, coffeefromthebrain.com. And on the next episode, we're going to be taking a look at servo motors. So adding the next layer to our programming and building skills. Have a great one.